Hi Nanets, in this video we're going to look at the Tesla Gen 3 wall connector which is behind me. We'll look at its physical attributes. We'll see how you can access the back end of this Gen 3 wall connector via Wi-Fi and do settings. And then we'll also show you how you can bring this wall connector into your Tesla app. Let's do this. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is National Tesla Dagong, the Gen 3 wall connector from Tesla. You can now buy this here in Australia from your Tesla app, go into shop, and then you can buy this here. It's about $780. But you do need an electrician to set this up. And here in the gong, I want to give a shout out to iPower Illawarra and Igor Sola, who helped me install this. He did a great job. You can see that the wall connector is beautifully fixed, very clean work. There is an isolator on top. I must say, I am reinstalling this, so to speak, because I had a Gen 2 wall connector and this is a Gen 3. So in this video, we're going to look at the physical attributes first. Second, we're going to look at how you can access the back end. Third, how you can bring it into your Tesla app. And the fourth and last part of the video, I'll show you the difference between a Gen 2 wall connector and a Gen 3 wall connector. Now, first up, we look at its physical attributes. First up, it came in a great box. So this is a gorgeous box that the wall connector came in. It's not too big at all. It is super small, super slim. And it's got all the wackiness that uh, Tesla has in its products. It says, uh, wall connector made on earth by humans. Well, if we have an alien attack and somebody finds this wall connector, they would know that it is made by humans. And then they probably would wonder, what are humans? Hmm. Now looking at this Gen 3 wall connector, it's got an acrylic faceplate, quite gorgeous this one is. And for people who want to customize this, there are skins that you can buy for this from third party and you can customize this to your heart's content. If you want to have a golden Elon Musk sign on it, well, go for it. It does look really good and super slim and super sleek. Uh, in my case, I do have the isolator on top. I think it's a good idea. But I heard recently from an electrician that here in Australia, you may not need an isolator. Check with your electrician before you install uh, because Tesla gives you an option of changing this wall connector by yourself if something goes wrong or if it becomes faulty. It only has like four screws, two on top, two at the bottom. So if you can remove these four screws, you can actually take this out and replace it with a new Tesla wall connector that you can buy from Tesla or Tesla will probably replace it for you if it is under warranty or if it is a problem of their own. So that way you can just do it by yourself. In that case, perhaps that isolator would be of value because you can just, just switch that off and then remove these four screws, take this off and then just remove and change. Perhaps that's something that you want to consider. Now coming to the cable situation in itself, it is super slim and super sleek. And yes, I did buy this hook and this is a Tesla monocured hook. As you can see here, it's got the Tesla symbol. You can buy this from the Tesla shop too. It makes that cable management super easy. But even otherwise, just as before, you can just loop it around the um, wall connector itself. That will work good too. But I somehow like this setup, particularly because I have two Teslas and I back them up into my garage and I actually charge them inside the garage. This works better for me, so I did buy this hook from Tesla. I can leave a link in the description below for you to access this. Right here, let's remove the cable and also remove the plug to look at the other physical attributes. Yes, there's a nice little pocket for you to plug in that when the ch uh, charger is not being used. And this is a super thin 7.3 meters cable and it does support both two-face and three-face. That's a simple question that I keep getting asked by people. My house only has two-face, no three-face. What do I do? Yes, it'll be slightly slower, but with three-face. Tesla promises up to 75 kilometers per hour with the three-face, with the two-face slightly lower. But this is a super slim cable. And I keep making mention of the super slim cable because I'm going to show you the Gen 2 wall connector and look at both the cable as well as the plug and you'll see there is some physical difference between them as well. So that is why I keep men making mention of that. And just like in our uh, super connector, super chargers as well, you have this button and you press on that, that'll open the charge port. So you say press on that, you already heard that click. This is my Tesla Model S and the charge port is on the other side. You heard that click where the charge port opened. 
Very quickly, I'll show you the side of the product. It's got a QR code that you can scan to get some more information and also to connect as well. Going to the other side, we do have the sort of uh, port where you can leave your charge port inside. It does have a small hook for it to latch onto so that it doesn't slide and fall. And it's, it's quite secure. You can't pull it out. You need to push it up and then pull it out too. So that is pretty cool there. Now, before I go to the next segment of this video, I want to point out this. The wall connector did come with this brochure, so to speak. It is actually an instruction manual as to how to fit the wall connector. If this is something that you are qualified to do and you want to know what the steps are, it's quite straightforward. It's super easy. It does come with all the equipment that you need for installation. But be aware that this does need a little bit of understanding. So do not do this if you do not know what you're doing. Right, now let's see how you can use Wi-Fi, connect to the wall connector and do configuration, software updates, so on and so forth. And for that, you do need that brochure again. You have this QR code. All you have to do is first scan the QR code. And once you scan the QR code, you click on that link. It'll ask, can I join the Wi-Fi of the wall connector and you say yes. And once you join the wall connector Wi-Fi, you can actually see it inside your settings, inside of Wi-Fi, your Wi-Fi will be connected to the wall connector and not to your home Wi-Fi. And once you do that, there is a web link that you can go into or a IP address that is 192.168.92.1 and that is there in the brochure too. So once you get into that, this will lead you to this particular um, web page and you can see your part number, your serial number, your installation L1, L2 and uh, end to earth. And then you can see if there's any active alerts. And first up, it'll tell you Wi-Fi is disabled because now you want to connect to your home Wi-Fi. And for that, what you need to do is click on that Wi-Fi symbol. It'll open all the available networks. And in my case, I'm just going to use the uh, now shot Ali Wi-Fi network and then once I click on that I need to do uh, the password obviously once I put the password in it says connecting to Nash Libs or now shot Ali's Wi-Fi and it says the connection is active and then you wait for a few seconds it finds the MAC address then it finds the subnet it finds, finds the DNS and the whole works so now you can actually use this particular DNS address and plug it into probably a home um, automation solution that you have. In my case, I have uh, um, home automation uh, by home assistant and I am going to plug this into home assistant and that way that can also be used to control a few things, get some data out of that too. So I'm going to use that. So that is useful to know the DNS. And then once you get that, you see that the Wi-Fi is connected and then you click on software and you make sure that the uh, software is up to date. In my case, it's up to date. It's 21.2.4 at the time of making this video. This is September of 2023, and that's my software today. And then it looks at the installation. So if you see here in this particular video that I filmed a little earlier, this was not green uh, yet. The, the lights were still in orange. So that means the output has not been set. So I need to go into installation, select the country, yeah, Australia. And then here you can now uh, add the max output current. Previously, we could not move it in single digit integers. You see here, you can, you can enter a value between six and 32 amps. Previously, I believe you can only choose a few uh, set amps that the wall connector came with in my gen two wall connector. I'll show that to you. And you click that and now I'm just going to put it at 32. And next one I want to see is the um, ground monitoring. Obviously you can't put 40 or anything. The ground monitor interrupter, this is very important and I'm going to read this to you. Please listen to this. If you do not know what is happening here, talk to your installer or talk to the guy who installed for you and that way you'll know what is happening. So ground connection will be monitored and a high detected ground resistance will disable the wall connector. This is the preferred setting to provide protection and should be selected where the ground connection is expected to be strong as uh, is the case on TN networks and most TT networks 
and where required by court or the law of the land. This is important. In my case, we, I left it at enabled. I did talk to my installer as well. I won't profess to say that I understand all that is happening here, which is not the case here. So be aware of that and only use the ones that you think is right for you. So that is very important. I left this at enabled. And once I did that, you know, um, I, I got that to be enabled. And once I did that, uh, I got the installation to work. I got the max output at 32 amps, the ground monitor in, in interrupter. It said uh, disabled here, but I did enable. Maybe it didn't update here when I was recording this, I believe. Uh, but then this is the most important last setting, the access control, the last setting. In our case, you can change this from all vehicles or only Tesla or authorized Tesla vehicles only. I'm going to leave it at uh, Tesla for now, but I can change that to all vehicles afterwards. Uh, and this is very easy to do this as well after the fact too, so it's not a big deal. Uh, and then there's a power sharing setting. So if you want to install more than one uh, you know, power wall, Gen 3 power wall to be specific, then you can have that in tandem and then that will distribute the, uh, the, the power sharing um, control as well. So that is something that you can look at. And once you get that done, now you can look at in, uh, connecting to uh, the Wi-Fi as well. So you can go back into your connections, into settings and change from your Wi-Fi of the Tesla wall connector to your home Wi-Fi and then you're all set. Right here, in this next part of the video, we're going to see how you can get your Tesla wall connector added to your Tesla app. And for that, you fire up the Tesla app and you go to the top right corner into the picture, in this case, my picture into my account. Because once you get into the account settings, uh, you can go into, um, I believe you go into settings there and then instead of vehicle, you click on energy products. And then when you go into energy products, you can now add your uh, wall connector. You can see the wall connector that's come up there. You click on that. And when you click on the wall connector, it will open a new page. It says getting started. And now you need to scan that QR code once again. All that you had to do, you had to click on that QR code again. And when you get that QR code going, that will ask you to add to your existing home. In my case, I do have a power wall, so it opens that. And it asks you to press and hold the button there. And that's when your wall connector will go into a pairing mode. So that's what we're going to do. Press and hold this for eight seconds or five seconds, to be honest. Um, and then keep pressing, pressing, pressing. And as you keep pressing that and holding, not doing it right, I think you keep pressing and holding that. There you go. It says uh, the app now wants to join the wall connector. You click on join, wait for a few seconds. Once we have done that, it should bring up the wall connector into our app. Yeah, there we go. It said it will blink for a few seconds and then now it upload, uploading new firmware. Uh, so that's what it's doing. It should take two minutes, it says. We'll wait for two minutes. And now it says restarting. And once it's restarted, uh, you um, continue with setup and then, and there you go. You can see that that wall connector is now idle and you can see it inside of your Tesla app. It is as cool as that. So let's plug in the vehicle and see. Right, now we're gonna plug this in and see if anything happens with the animation change press and that opens the um, wall uh, sorry the uh, charge port in my Tesla Model S You're plugged in and now you can see that the car is recognized it is a red Tesla Model S it is recognized as a Tesla Model S there and it's now ready to charge of course I have uh, scheduled charging in my car 
perhaps that's why it is not working. Let's change that. You can even see it says plugged in Wonder Woman. That is exactly what it is. I'm now producing 3.0 kilowatts on my solar. My house is only consuming 0 0.7 kilowatts at this time. I'm giving back 2.3 kilowatts to the grid. This particular app setup is absolutely amazing. Tesla is, is unparalleled. Um, and that is why in most instances I tell people, you know, if you are looking to buy uh, a, a wall connector, although there are other options out there, this particular way of integrating everything together, nothing comes close to Tesla. Let's say, let's click on start charging. I don't really have to charge, but that's just for the purposes of this demo, I'm showing this and we'll go back there. And there you see, you can see that there is a flow of energy. It was white in color, uh, and there you can see energy going in from the wall connector to my Model S, 0.9, 4.6 kilowatts. It's saying uh, discharging now because it's it's um, uh, taking from my power wall here. So I do have two power walls, you can see here. Um, and uh, that's what's happening, 10.1, 11.6 kilowatts. This is super cool indeed. I'm going to disable this. I'm not, I don't need to charge the car at this time. Okay, here we are. We are now comparing the Gen 2 wall charger with the Gen 3 wall charger. And we'll see uh, what are the physical attributes of this uh, particular charger and see where we are. So I'm just going to place this side by side. You can already see that the Gen 3 wall charger is most certainly smaller in the way it looks and also sleeker and better looking because of this acrylic faceplate that it has. And again, the cables as well, you can see, let me pull this up and just do a side-by-side -side comparison of the cables by placing this down. You can see the way the cables are, are made. The Gen 3 wall charger here is definitely a thinner cable than the Gen 2 wall charger as well. So that is the two physical attributes in this particular uh, Gen 2 versus Gen 3 comparison. And next one is the port as well. So this is a uh, much larger port and this is a much smaller port. So if I can place them side by side too, that will help you make the difference. This is more in the styling of the V3 superchargers and this is more in the styling of the V2 superchargers. If you are somebody who's been with Tesla for a long time, you'll know the distinction between the two. The newer Tesla fans and the newer Tesla owners are probably just going to be knowing the V3 superchargers. Um, and this styling is akin to that, I must say. And now coming to the side, there is the reset button on one side and the hooks uh, for, the, for the back plate as well. Unfortunately, the V2 chargers do not talk to the V3 chargers. So if you want to do a tandem connection, I believe it only has to be two V3 chargers uh, and it's not backwards compatible, I'm afraid. So those are the physical attributes and differences. I believe the process to get uh, other cars to work is a slightly different process than the Gen 3 uh, wall chargers as well. So there we go. This is my extensive Gen 3 wall charger review and setup video. If you like what I'm doing, click on that subscribe button. Also follow me on all socials. I am Tesla Gong in most of the socials. In particular, I'm quite active on X, formerly known as Twitter, as Tesla Gong. You can also follow my Facebook page, Tesla in the Gong. All my videos come on there. Also, you can go to my WordPress website, Tesla in the Gong, and click on the newsletter. You can see my videos as soon as they drop. I'll see you guys in another interesting video very soon. Until then, this is Nash from Tesla in the Gong, signing off. Peace.